Santos Jr. He is a hypnotist and does it in many forms. So Frank, thanks so much for joining me here today. How hey, are you? Great, how are you? I'm, I'm doing well. So let's talk a little bit about how you got into being a comic hypnotist and then we'll get into the other kind of stuff that you do. Sure, my dad did shows when I was probably four years old. So I grew up with it. And then when I was about 20, I started doing shows then. That's pretty fun. So yeah. talk to us just a little bit about how you like how you got into it, how your dad got into it, and, and really um, how you even go about becoming a hypnotist. Sure. So my dad actually owned his own uh, market for years. And then uh, he saw a hypnotist at a, a show, and he got interested in it. So he decided to look into it. So he looked into it, got certified. He was doing clinical quit smoking, weight loss, stuff like that. But at a party he was at, the entertainment didn't show up. They asked him to try it out, so he did, and it went really well. So from there, it just built up to more and more shows to became, he's like a legend for a long time. And then I started doing shows after that. So it's kind of a family tradition. Correct, yes. yes. Family tradition, you gotta Definitely. keep it going. Yes. Uh, so you have a show tonight at the Comedy Connection, yes. right? Yes, yes. Uh, so what do you do when you're going out there, you're performing in front of people, do you really just feed off the audience? Is it, is it really just kind of a comedy, con like you really have to feed off the audience, but also really kind of just depends on what people are doing? How does it all work? So the, the audience to me is like batteries. They, they, give me, <laughs> they give me energy to do a show, but I need the volunteers. If people volunteer, have a good show and that makes it fun. So it's up to the audience to be fun and the people in the audience to volunteer. No volunteers is a terrible show. A lot of volunteers <laughs> is a good show. Do you normally see, are, you, are usually people pretty excited and they're pretty forthcoming when it comes to this kind of stuff? When you go to my show, you're expecting to volunteer, you're expecting yeah. to have audience participation. Yeah. So that's what I'm hoping for. So you, yes, definitely. <laughs> um, so, so what do people expect? So people are coming for the comedic performances. We'll get yes. into the, the therapeutic hypnotist yep. later, hypnosis later. Um, what do people, what can people can expect? Like if they're coming to just watch a show, they don't want to go up there and volunteer. Yep. What is that a little bit of it like? So. The, the deal is I get the volunteers, I do a little test, and then I get them all hypnotized. And from there I do skits. So the skits are funny. I turn people to singers, dancers, make them believe they have to go to the bathroom, they get halfway there, they forget. So it's, it's a fun show, interactive with the audience, and you can actually be a star of the show if you do volunteer. Okay. I think a lot of times people think it's pretty funny, but they get nervous to volunteer because they don't yes. want to embarrass themselves, Correct. right? So uh, talk to us a little bit about hypnosis. You know, people might have common misconceptions. Maybe we can do like a, a fact and false about sure. that. So a lot of people think that when you're getting hypnotized, you lose all control and I'm controlling you. And that's a myth. That's not true. You actually hypnotize yourself on stage. I get you there. I'm like the um, direction. So if you're building a desk, and it comes in a box and you see the directions, you read directions and you build everything. The directions didn't build a desk, you built it. So I'm like the directions getting you there and I hypnotize you, but you actually hypnotize yourself. But once on hypnosis, you won't do anything you normally wouldn't do, anything against your will, your morals, anything that bothers you. I can't force you, I can't ask you questions about the past, I'm not gonna answer them, it's gonna hurt you or your spouse or somebody else. So it's just relaxation. Okay, so I wouldn't, you know, if you told me to punch you right now, Right. I'm not going to do that, so even if you told me to punch you, I wouldn't. Correct, unless you okay. wanted to punch me. Yes. <laughs> I don't want to punch no, you. No, thank you. So, Appreciate that. No violence, yes, please. Exactly. No violence, please. So, yeah, I think it's it's fun, and you've done a lot of performances. You've performed a lot of places. You've yes. had a lot of big clients, like performing at Google, at Nike, CBS, these big companies. Um, do people usually react the same way? Do, you, do people really seem to enjoy it? Yes. And then get relaxed because of it? <laughs> Correct, yes. Um, so a lot of shows are different. I do a lot of theater shows, and it seems like a theater crowd is there to see your show, and they're really into it. I do a lot of comedy clubs, they're there to see your show. So, But when you do a corporate-style show, sometimes they're forced there. It's a little tougher. <laughs> they're but, like, oh, I have so much work to do. So right. many emails. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So that gets a little tough, but I mean, usually 95% of the time it's fun. Um, everyone has a good time, I have a good time, and I really enjoy doing it. As long as you're laughing, I'm having a good time. What's been some of your favorite t things to do, or favorite places to perform, or, you know, because you do things with school audiences, and um, what's usually the best kind of crowd, or, or what's maybe sure. your, your favorite gag skit? Well, colleges are usually the easiest in high yeah. schools, because all the kids want to volunteer, the students want to volunteer, they don't have too many 
like skeletons in their closet, yeah. you would say. <laughs> Even though I don't ask you anything about your past or what's going on with you now, people think that when you're more of a dog. Yeah. Um, so they, they, they think they're gonna lose something, which it doesn't happen. But um, fun skits, I like the term people as singers, because sometimes you have a person who sings amazing and the crowd is amazed by it. Then you have somebody who thinks they're amazing and they're <laughs> awful, it's even funnier. So that, that's a good part in terms of dancers, ballet, um, depends on the style show. High school shows are PG and G rated shows, but tonight the Comic Connection is an R rated show. Okay. So I turn people to sit at ballerinas, they're like exotic dancers. But no one gets naked. It's not like that. It's just Maybe more... it's a little twerky. Or yeah, exactly. Like that. Okay. Exactly, yes, exactly. Um, let's talk a little bit about the other side of things. So we like to laugh, which is always a bit of therapy in itself. Correct. But you also are clinically certified in hypnosis. How did you get into doing that? So when you get certified, which I did in, in the 90s, um, they don't teach stage hypnosis. They teach um, therapeutic, like quit smoking, weight loss, doing phobias. So I got certified in that aspect of hypnosis. I also got certified so I can teach it if I really wanted to. I, I don't, but I could. So I do a lot of quit smoking and weight loss. That's pretty much what I keep to because mainly I do shows. If I'm around during the week, they have office. People come see me to, if you want to eat healthier, I help you out. I don't put you on a diet. I say healthy eating, healthy lifestyle. And quit smoking, that's the big thing I love to help people with because that's such a bad habit to break. And it's a hard habit to break. But with hypnosis, if you really want to quit, it really does help you. So how do you actually do hypnosis? And what do you say to people that are like, nah, that's, that doesn't, that's nothing. So like, You're a fraud or right, whatever. Right. Like, how do you deal with people saying that kind of stuff? I'm used to it. I yeah. mean, I've been it's doing been years and years and years. 20, I've been doing shows now since 94. So yeah. for 20 some odd years, yeah. I always have people saying, it's all fake, it's all fake. And I always try to tell them, come back with a group of people, try to have a friend volunteer. And when they go on stage, the show is funnier for you but then you see your per the person you know on stage and it's just a bit bad, like, wow, that, they're really under hypnosis. So yeah. it's, it's true. I mean, I help so many people quit smoking, eat healthier, but on stage, um, I, people come to me all the time, that was the funniest thing, this person would never ever do that, and they had a great time. So, but just relaxation, I can't make you do anything you don't want to do, so. So maybe if people want to, like, the, quitting smoking, I think, could definitely be, be beneficial. Correct. Um, what about, so hypnosis can be very, like a relaxation technique. What if people just want help relax, relaxing? So, yeah, so people do, um, are anxious, have high anxiety or high blood pressure. The relaxation really helps you calm down. So I can actually teach you to relax yourself. So when you're hyped up or you, you feel intense, you feel stressed, a lot of people either reach for a cigarette or reach for food or yeah. do something bad. I can actually train you just to relax you, relax yourself, calm yourself down. And once you start feeling that relaxation feeling, you look forward to doing it all the time. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, so say people come to a show and they want to get hypnotized or and maybe have some barriers or they want to come to you and get hypnotized to help in whatever type of healthy lifestyle maneuver. How do you make yourself more able to get hypnotized? All right, so the best way to get hypnotized is for one, to be willing, I can't force it to. So if you're willing, you should be able to go under. For clinical, it, it's a guarantee pretty much you can go under, unless you just fight the whole time. With stage, a little different because um, there's people in the audience coughing or sneezing or clanging the glass <laughs> or the talking. There's always someone coughing or sneezing. Right, exactly, so it's a little harder. So the best subject would be, if you really want to be hypnotized, is some of you focus well and uh, concentrate on my voice and the music, be able to block out things but also uh, be willing. Willing is a huge thing. If you have a good imagination, you'd be great on stage as well. Okay, so if you're interested, he has a show tonight at the Comedy Connection. Um, and you're a Rhode Island guy, right? Yes, yeah, yeah. Cool. a local Cumberland guy. Cumberland guy, yeah. okay. Mm -hmm. So, should be a lot of fun. Um, do you see her, could you ever see yourself doing anything else? I was a cook for years. Um, I still do that at home, but I enjoy doing the hypnosis part. I love helping people. I really love making people laugh. Seeing someone laugh, I think it's great. And if they're enjoying themselves, I'll keep doing it. It's kind yeah. of a therapy in itself. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Awesome. Yeah. Frank Santos Jr., thank you so much for joining us here today. It's been a true pleasure. I'm not going to get hypnotized, so anyone who was hoping for that, sorry, not happening. <laughs> Next time. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, we're wrapping up here in the Navigate Credit Union Broadcast Center. I'm Molly O'Brien. Thanks so much for joining us. Ava Gaudet kicks off things at 3 o'clock tomorrow, followed by Kate Nagel for news and politics. Thanks so much for joining us. Have a great one. For joining us, have a great one. For joining us, have a great one. For joining us, have a great one.